there has been a wealth of documented artifacts found within very ancient sediment, coal seams, minerals, and even stones and geodes. All indicating that a vastly different story has taken place upon our Earth, to that of what the majority stubbornly persist in assuming. So many pieces of evidence, in fact, it seems that it has been an impossible task for an unknown group of tyrants who, for whatever reason, have attempted to conceal or suppress such discoveries, or more importantly, hide the historical tales in which they are all trying to tell us. And these next three are no exception. The Lanzhou Stone, discovered in 1999 by Zhilin Wang in a remote mountainous area in northwest China. Upon research being undertaken, it was established to be unexplainable. The rock is made of an unknown material, and the metal artifact embedded within may quite possibly have alien origins. As reported in the Lanzhou Morning News on June 26, 2002, more than 10 geologists, physicists, and other specialists from such institutes as the National Land Resources Bureau of China, the Institute of Geology and Minerals Research, and the School of Resources and Environment all eventually studied the possible origins of the stone. The results of these examinations, the possible explanations for its formation or indeed origin, were never released. Amazingly, however, the scientists unanimously concluded that the stone is currently one of the most valuable in China or possibly the world. When pressed for further explanation, it was disclosed that the rock will apparently be extremely important for future research and, quote, archaeological studies. Any further disclosure regarding the scientists' discoveries has remained elusive. The Wolfseg iron has a similarly suppressed story, over 20 million years old, this extremely ancient and clearly once worked cube of iron may also have come from space. Indeed, that is a conclusion many educated researchers arrived at. Although attempts to discredit such claims involve recent testing, which has shown the cube lacks usual elements present in meteoric material, they all avoid mentioning its strong magnetic characteristics, a signature uncannily similar to that found in meteorites and other objects with an otherworldly origin. It was discovered when a workman at the Braun Iron Foundry in Schoendorf, Austria, was breaking up a block of lignite that had been mined at Wolfsegg. In 1886, mining engineer Adolf Gurlt reported the object to the Natural History Society of Bonn, who noted that the object was coated with a thin layer of rust, was made of iron, and had a specific gravity of 7.75. Early descriptions of the object appeared in contemporary editions of the scientific journals Nature and L'Astronomie, identified at the time by numerous scientists as being a fossil meteorite. Now virtually unanimously concluded to have been man-made, it has thus been unexplainable. Stolen at one point, it was strangely returned to another museum, now without a compelling mainstream explanation it has simply been condemned to the history books as some form of elaborate hoax. Impossible artifacts have been found in the most unusual of places. For example, a seemingly unbreakable piece of unknown metal, possibly a ring of ancient, or according to man's official history, alien origin found within a geode encapsulated for over 200 million years. Most people begin with good intentions, but sadly, are often allured away by various means of temptation, subsequently allowing such relics to disappear into the archives of the past. This report and the accompanying image, it seems, is all that we will ever see regarding this compelling artifact. A mysterious fate experienced by many such artifacts. For example, sadly, only the Wolfseg iron now remains in the public domain for future testing. What secret within our past is felt by some clearly powerful people as an imperative to keep concealed from the majority of the world? Maybe the question should be, will we ever be ready or indeed able to find out? Most people are aware of the crystal skulls, the best of which hidden away within the Smithsonian. Perfectly carved from solid pieces of crystal, their origins, purpose, or indeed possible function remain a mystery. 
What many are not aware of, however, is the astonishing archaeological discoveries which have recently been made in Spain. A remarkable set of crystal weapons found within megalithic tombs at a site known as Valencina de la Concepci. Archaeologists investigating the site have uncovered a vast array of crystal arrowheads, an exquisite crystal dagger blade, along with a number of other artifacts. Found within an enormous megalithic structure, constructed out of large slabs of slate, the resting place of at least 25 once clearly very important individuals, along with their extraordinary smorgasbord of grave goods. Included within the finds was another mystifying number of shrouds, claws made of tens of thousands of perforated amber beads. Just how they managed to fashion these mysterious crystal weapons remains unclear. A number of investigators have remarked that great skill must have been required to produce these unique rock crystal weapons. The rock crystal dagger blade, in particular, was found in the upper level of the structure. Its morphology is not unheard of in the Iberian Peninsula, although, however, all the samples recorded anywhere else were made from flint and not crystal. Furthermore, and perhaps even more intriguing, is the fact that the crystal is of unknown origins, detailed and thorough analysis being unable to successfully pinpoint the original whereabouts of this magnificent crystal. Given the technical skill and difficulties involved in creating the objects from such a material, rather than simple flint, their purpose, and indeed manufacture, has been a tough thing for academia to explain. However, it is unlikely that any funded academic would presume, like we can, that these highly advanced, perfectly manufactured weapons could in fact be far earlier artifacts, created by a civilization with far greater capabilities than those of known prehistory. Supporting this hypothesis is that, despite these objects being found relatively frequently within the burials of the 4th and 3rd millennia BC, Crystal implements disappear from later funerary monuments within the early Bronze Age, a quote, truly striking development, researchers say, as it would seem the use of this raw material as grave goods was almost entirely abandoned, end quote. The reason for this remains a mystery. However, is it possible, as mentioned, that these were merely a discovered relic of a bygone era, thus making their availability limited? This would therefore make it appear as though there was a sudden halt in their mysterious and unexplained manufacture, while all the while, in reality, the manufacturing of these objects occurred at a different time in our history. Discovered in 1860 within the astounding Valley of the Kings, the Atlantis Ring has since proven to have been a most incredible of finds. Not only for the secret, sacred geometry that was found to have been inscribed upon this seemingly insignificant clay ring, but also for the strange, seemingly reoccurring pattern of curses or good luck talismans wrapped around the entire magic of this once incredible yet now lost civilization. Once discovered, it was said to cast a protective spell upon those who wore it a supposed positive energy force that, although as strange as that of the curse of Tutankhamun, is one that is far less mentioned within the career and discoveries of Howard Carter himself. This, regardless of the fact that it has since gone on to be an incredibly popular mass-produced product, once kept secret for many years by Carter himself. Also now sold under the claim that it does indeed emit a powerful energy field around the wearer. The science behind these claims we cannot claim to understand. However, the ring's modern popularity, along with the lack of coverage regarding this possible legend within the discussion of Howard Carter's career, we have found peculiar. Featuring two triangles, six small and three larger rectangles with a semi-cylindrical form, it was originally found by Marquis de Grain. A blueprint of the ring was soon sent to Carter himself, who made and wore a secret replica which he kept himself until his death in 1939. In 1922, Carter would discover King Tut's tomb. Before opening the tomb, hieroglyphics above the tomb's unbroken seal were read. It said, 
the wings of death shall touch all who violates the Pharaoh's eternal rest. Unperturbed, they open the tomb, discovering treasures beyond all of their wildest imaginations. Yet, as warned, all who were involved in this discovery eventually met curious fates, with just Carter himself left, the one person who was undeniably the most guilty party in the entire excavation. He would not die until 17 years later, at the reasonably young age of 66. During these 17 years, however, the flurry of media attention around the claimed curse persisted. Interestingly, whenever asked how he had seemingly escaped the curse for so long, he would always reply that he had a secret talisman, a good luck charm, that protected him from the curse. This initial cast of the ring Carter had made, it turns out, he seemingly knew of its incredibly important geometric significance. Yet it was not until 1940, while going through his documents, that his studies and indeed rules of wearing the ring were revealed to the world. His talisman, a replica of the Atlantis ring. A relic many thousands of years old, originally made from Eswan and clay, like something out of a Holy Grail story. It seems the least valuable, seemingly most conspicuous of finds turned out to be one of the most, if not the most valuable to Howard himself. Out of all the golden wonders he had ever unearthed, this one, one which he didn't even discover himself, he kept closest to his heart. It is because of this that we find the Atlantis ring highly compelling. Alex Putney over at humanresonance.org has, for a number of years now, been unraveling some rather startling secrets. Secrets surrounding Nikola Tesla's free energy technologies and the systematic suppression thereof, and seemingly deciphering a number of astounding ancient discoveries, all of which strongly indicating one's highly advanced knowledge of sound waves, resonance, and indeed levitation of extremely large weights. Coined as the, quote, piezoelectric basins by Alex himself, it seems he, along with a number of other researchers' exhaustive efforts, have discovered some compelling and intriguing characteristics of many ancient ruins which litter most of Egypt, dotted along the banks of the Nile. We have, in the past, touched upon the possibility of sound resonance having been a factor in Edward Leedskalen's mysterious and secretive construction of Coral Castle, which can be found within Florida. Many believe that Edward somehow unraveled the secrets to the pyramids, and in doing so, was able to recreate his own rudimentary resonance machine, enabling him to lift enormous weights with relative ease. As our knowledge of our environment and the mysteries of our ancestors deepens, especially regarding their once mystifying and astounding knowledge of construction, left to ruin in many areas of the world, accepted as having never had access to heavy machinery, we must look elsewhere for our answer as to how these weights were moved. An outspoken local wisdom keeper of the Giza Plateau, Egyptologist and tour guide Abdel Hakim Ayan, has brought very controversial but extremely compelling knowledge to bear regarding profound implications of these astounding ancient constructions. Hakim's provocative commentary on the misconceptions of modern academics was broadcast in The Pyramid Code, a documentary produced by Dr. Carmen Bolter professor at the University of Calgary, a documentary well worth investigation. It reveals several insights, including the advanced nature of the psychoacoustic and biorhythmic effects of these ancient Sanskrit monuments that he claims have all been falsely attributed to the Egyptian civilization. Part of his testimony is as follows. It must be noted that due to Abdel's intimate knowledge of the Giza Plateau, he should undoubtedly be perceived as a reliable source of avenues for alternative esoteric research. He claims that in 1936, while the Sphinx was still covered up to the neck in sand, there were tunnels he personally explored. Claiming that, past the Abu Ghraib, a crystal altar was found, containing a round disc in the middle of four radial lines, a symbol of Hotep, Hotep meaning peace and food. This round disc was a lid on a shaft, about 180 feet deep to the level of the ocean, 
where he claims there is still running water, and there is still, quote, much more to be found.